Preacher? Preach. Preach on? Preach. Amen. Magandang umaga po sa bawat isa. Nangina niyo po po ako nakikita, amen? Nagsasawa na po ba kayo sa mukha ko? Ganito po talaga yung mukha ko ngayon, ano? Nanginibago po sa hangin ng Maynila. Kaya naging burug-burug. Pero bagamat na burug-burug siya, hindi naman yun yung magsasalita, yung aking kaluluwa. Yung kaluluwa po na pinigay ng Panginoon at pinigahan ng Panginoon para gamitin ng Panginoon sa pagkakulatan. Amen. So, are you ready, mga kapatid? Amen. At uh, ako po ay naatasan, ang aking tatay ay laging short notice yan. So, kaya, nung meeting namin kahapon ng mga preachers, sabi ng uh, aming bishop ay, uh, ang mga preachers ay always ready. Amen ba, preacher? Amen. Amen ba? Amen ba, racism? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so this morning po, ay ang oras natin ay 10.32. Gusto natin makauwi ng mas maaga because we want to celebrate our Father's Day with our families, right? Yes. So let's uh, stand up, let's open our Bibles in the book of Genesis chapter number 22. Let us open our Bibles in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter number 22. Say Amen pag nakita na po namin. Amen. Let us open our Bibles in the book of Genesis, chapter number 22. Babasahin natin ang verse number 1 up to verse number 18. In verse number 1, sabot na po natin basahin, begin. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. In English, we say that in English. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, my son, who thou lovest, and yet take it to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a rent of the upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee to Verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. And the third day, Abraham took up his eyes, eyes, and saw the place afar off. In verse number 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon the sun. And he took the fire on his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. Verse 7, And Isaac spoke, or spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Verse 9, And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham said, and took the night to stay son. Verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the ladder, neither do I make anything unto thee. For now I know that thou hearest God, seeing thou hast not thy son, thy only son, from me. Verse 13, And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold him around, caught in a thicket by his thorns, or horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And in verse number 15, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And 
That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. So by verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let us pray. O oh God, you are magnificent. You are the God of all gods. You are the King of all kings. The rulers of all rulers. You are the mighty among all the mighty. We worship you this day. Forgive us for all of our sins. Sa mga aming pong mga kalipuan, Panginoon, forgive us and help us to be able to correct these mistakes and be able to work in your vineyard. Sa mga kapatid ko po na nandirito ngayon, buksan niyo po ang kanilang mga isip, Panginoon. Lord, bigyan mo sila ng komportable ng pakiramdam dahil nararamdaman din po namin ang init ng panahon. Habang kami nakikinig ng inyong mga salita, Panginoon, palamigin mo ang aming environment, maging conducive ito sa aming pakikinig, bigyan mo rin kami ng full blast and span of attention na aming pong mag-grasp at maintindihan ang inyong pong nais sabihin sa amin. Gayun din o Diyos, ang aming mga kapatid na nasa balig ng karamdaman, kung sila ay nanonood sa kanilang mga tahanan, inyong silang bigyan ng comfort. At na o Diyos, ang, gagawitin, ang gagamitin mong lingkod sa mga ganito, ay hindi ang aking sarili ang makita o ang ano pa mang bagay, bagpus ang inyong biyaya, Panginoon, sa aming pong buhay. Lahat ng kaya namin gawin is only because of your grace. And help us, O oh God, to realize that without you, we cannot do anything. Help us, O oh God, na hindi kami lumabas sa church na ito, sa building na ito, Panginoon, na kami po ay hindi napagpala ng inyong mga salita. Gamitin mo ang mga salita mo, Diyos, upang magbago ng buhay, at magbago ng pag-isip, at magbago ng kaluluwa. Ingatan mo kami patuloy sa pangalan ng Jesus. Amen. Gandang umaga po, pari. Ano po tayong magsiyo Amen. Are you still here with me? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. I think it's been a long time that I have stood here and stand here in front of you for a very long time. And um, might as well use this opportunity to be able to share the Word of God. You know what? The reason why we are here on this earth is not just because we're here. Not just because ipinalaw ka ng nanay mo sa mga magitan ng tatay mo. Okay? It's a union of two souls. Alam niyo po, marriage is really sacred as to what I have read and what I have understood. Marriage is really sacred because when there's a time na uh, ang uh, babae at lalaki ay nagkaroon ng meeting, ang uh, tinatawag natin uh, after, ang uh, tinatawag natin the sacredness of sex, alam niyo po ba ang nangyayari doon? Ang nangyayari po doon is the two souls are being combined into a one soul. And that is the reason why very, very, very um, sacred po ang, ang uh, pag-aasawa. And we have to be very careful in choosing our partner in life. The Bible is really clear about this one. But our topic is not about that. Our topic is all about the best characters of Abraham. The best characters of Abraham. The characters of Abraham that we think it is best. Kilala po ba natin si Abraham? Kilala po ba natin si Abraham? Si Abraham po ay sino? The father of all nations. Kaya kung meron din tayo babatingin ngayon na Happy Father's Day, I believe Abraham, Abraham, Happy Father's Day to you in heaven. I believe that you are one of the cloud of witnesses who are praying and cheering for us. Magpatuloy ka lang, Sister Josie. Magpatuloy ka lang, Sister Josie. Uh, patuloy ka lang, Sister Gina. I believe Abraham is there cheering for us, praying for us because he is the father of all nations as the Bible is telling us. Our topic is all about best characters of Abraham, a father's faith. Ang pananampalataya ng isang ama. Meron pa tayong pangalawang topic, a family that fears God. So we have two, uh, so the topic number one, which is best characters of Abraham, the subtopic is a family that fears God. As I was a kid, I always 
just listen to the story of my mom and my dad. They were telling us this story for quite some time. Paulit-ulit. Paulit-ulit kung naririnig yung story ni Abraham at yung story po ng pag-provide ng Diyos sa lahat ng ating pong mga pangangailangan. Paulit-ulit, mula maliit, hanggang ngayon na ako po ay mag-27 na this coming Friday. Paulit-ulit. Paulit-ulit. And there was a time when I was a little kid, alam niyo po, minsan parang naririnig din ako kasi bakit paulit-ulit? Bakit pa ulit ulit? Growing up inside the church from the very beginning seems like this selection is a familiar one to me. Alam niyo po, kahit pa, ang mga Baptist, mga Baptist uh, Christians natin, mga, mga kids natin sa church, kung ito kung parang mo yan sa ibang mga Kristiyano na mga kabataan sa labas, they are well knowledgeable enough in the Bible. Palakpakan nga natin yung mga kabataan natin, they are well knowledgeable enough in the Bible. Sa amin kung virtual fellowship namin, there was a time na pinarecite namin yung books of the Bible. We have 66 books of the Bible. Yung mga kasama namin sa ibang mga churches na nakikijoin sa atin, di nila alam. And that is the advantage of being a Baptist Christian. Amen? Growing up inside the church from the very beginning seems like this selection is a familiar one. Kung minsan, habang pinakulit-ulit po natin mapakinggan ang mga biblical stories, somehow, Parang ayaw na ulit natin mapag-aralan. Aminin mo. Ayaw na ulit natin mapag-aralan because alam na natin yung moral lessons. Mama, there are fixed moral lessons ang masasabi natin na alam na natin. Parang kadalasan, ito po ang mga nagiging problema ng mga kabataan. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi po, yung mga stories na ishishare natin sa mga outages natin, halos pa ulit-ulit. Pero hindi natin alam that we have to do this. Why? Because the Word of God is working. It's doing something to the lives of these young people, doing something for my life, for your life, for every one of us here, even though paulit-ulit natin binabahagi, kasi nga po, hindi pa nila natututunan. And that is the reason why kung bakit natin paulit-ulit na kailangan ibahagi sa kanila to. Why? So that we may be able to learn from it. Alam niyo po, that is the reason why innovations are very important. What did, why did I say innovations? Sa mga teachers out there na ginagamit sa mga outreach ministries, variations are really important. No? You have to make sure that you capture the attentions of your students. You have to make sure na makakapture mo ang atensyon ng span ng mga estudyante mo. Alam nyo kung bakit? Kasi parang minsan, napapansin ko, ang mga storytelling methods natin need something to, to change. Ang mga storytelling methods natin seem to be in need of changes. We need to innovate. Alam nyo po bakit? The normal type would be, alam nyo kung ano nangyari? May pictures. Tama? May pictures, tapos pinapakita natin sa kanila, tama? Can you relate? Can you relate? Tapos, pagkatapos natuturo natin, minsan yung teacher binabasa yung nandoon sa storybook, tapos pinapakita niya yung picture. Alam niyo po, katapos na nagme-memory verse. It is about time for us to update our teaching methods in reaching out kids. Amen? Introduce new ways of modalities. Kagaya ng, ng may mga, may mga, kagaya ngayon, palapakan natin yung mga outreaches, mga outreach teachers natin. Alam niyo ngayon, nag-roleplaying na sila. Di ba? Nag-roleplaying na sila. Bakit? Because we are accountable to these kids. You and you, every one of us here, are accountable to these kids. Anyway, our conversation this morning is not about a lecture to the teachers. But I want you to know that we want to expound this story and learn something new from this passage. Kahit na paulit-ulit mo nang napakinggan the story of Abraham, there is still a learning that the Lord will teach you. Alam niyo po kami yun? Let's try to understand. Brethren, I want you to open your hearts, your minds, to new possibilities of learning. Buksan natin ang ating isip. Buksan mo ang isipan mo. Sa mga posible pa nating matutunan sa story na to. Alam na natin ang story na to? 
But there are still things that we can learn from this one. At hindi pa natin nalalaman ang the entire ways of the Bible. I want you to open your hearts, your mind to new possibilities of learning and the ability to grasp these lessons and apply it in our lives. Alam nyo, may question po ako, was there a time in our lives that we know that God was testing us? May pagkakataon pa sa buhay mo na alam mo na ang Diyos ay sinusubo ka. Was there a time in your life that you know that God is testing you? You know what? Not just some sort of testing, but it is a matter of life and death. Alam niyo po kami, we were tested by life and death situation. My father was diagnosed with, with a blockage in his in this largest artery of his heart. And then he was tested of life and death situation. We know for the fact na minsan tinatest tayo ng Panginoon. Alam niyo po, have we ever felt how hard to be a Christian in the 21st century? Naramdaman niyo po ba na napakahirap maging kristyano sa 21st century where everything is instant? Lahat instant. Pagkain, pumunta ka sa school, lahat nga ngayon, one-stop shop eh. Di ba? 7-Eleven, everything is convenient. Napakahirap na po maging kristyano sa 21st century. Can you still feel it? Can you feel it? I can feel it. Why? Because everything is being seen by our naked eyes. Lagi tayong nakatempt sa ating paligid. No? Lumas ka dyan, may temptations. Pumasa ka dyan, may temptations. Lahat may temptations. And my next question would be, have you ever tried to think of it how hard it was as well to live for the Christians in the early centuries? I-compare mo din, gano'ng kaya kahirap mamuhay noong panahon nila Abraham din bilang mga Kristiyano? Kung gano'ng kahirap mabuhay sa panahon natin ngayon ng 21st century, i-compare mo din gano'ng kaya kahirap mabuhay sila. Bakit? Kasi mismo ang Diyos nakikipag-usap sa kanila directly. Right. Right. Ang sabi nga sa verse number 1, alam niyo ba nung sabi din sa verse number 1? And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto Abraham. Gano'ng kahirap nakipag-usap sa Diyos? Is it just imagine? Just imagine na ito ang mismo kung nasa panahon ka nila Abraham, kaya mo bang makipag-usap sa Diyos sa buhay mo ngayon? Just imagine. Ang hirap ng kalagayan ni Abraham. Bakit? Nakikipag-usap siya directly sa Diyos eh. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Abraham. Abraham. Both periods of time requires the guidance of God for us not to fall in the penalty of sins. Try to think of it. The passage that we have just read has some effects to the current situation that we have now. Think of these things. Paano kung hindi nangyari na sinubok si Abraham sa binasa natin ito? Nandiyan ko kaya? Nakaupo ko kaya dyan? No. Because Abraham is the father of all nations. Abraham was tested so that you and me would be here. Abraham was tested so that you could sit there. Paano kung hindi nangyari? Kapatid, ang ating pinag-aaralan ay may connection sa ating pamamuhay sa panahon natin ngayon. Kung sakaling hindi nangyari ang bagay na ito kay Abraham, tayo kanya ay nakaupo ngayon sa lugar na ito at sa kasamang nagpupuri sa Panginoon. This is a this has a great impact on our Christianity right now. And what Abraham did thousands of years ago as he obeyed the Lord, this has a great impact on you right now. Kasi kung hindi sumunod si Abraham sa Panginoon, hindi ka makakakilala sa Panginoon. Amen. Right. Kaya po, very very important ang ating pag-aaralan. Lahat ng nakasulat sa Biblia ay may connection po sa ating pamumuhay sa panahon natin ngayon bilang mga Kristiyano. I want you to know how powerful the Word of God is. I want you to know how powerful the Word of God is. The Word of God is. I want you to know that the Word of God is powerful. Wala ka lang talagang time. Unawain, basahin, at pagsumikapang aralin. Bago mo natin ito simula, nais ko pong 
pagpagiin ng mga tatay ng isang mapagpalang pagdiriwang sa araw ng mga tatay. Palakpahan nga po natin. <laughs> Hindi pa po ako nagsisimula. Amen? Are you still here? Yes! Yeah. Handa na po ba kayo? Our topic for this morning, Best Characters of Abraham, A Father's Faith. And then the subtopic is A Family That Fears God. For point number one, let us go to verse number one. Ano po, anong point number one natin? What is the best character of Abraham? Point number one, a character of quick response to God's calling. Amen. A character of quick response to God's calling. That's our point number one. Baptist po tayo, so meron tayong three points. So, pagbasa natin mabuti ang unang verse. Alam niyo kung anong sabi dyan? Ang sabi dyan, And it came to pass, after these things, that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto Abraham, Anong sabi ng Diyos? Abraham. Abraham. Sino tinatawag niyo dito? Abraham. The Lord God was calling to Abraham. Okay? Pagbasa natin, ang sabi ng Diyos? Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. This is a good character of Abraham. Bakit? This verse or chapter started by means of God's calling. God's calling. Amen. Brethren, this is truly amazing. Pagpasan po natin. The story started with a calling. Baka mga kaya, tumatawag mo Panginoon. Sister May. Sister John. Sister Rosely. Kailan ka pa magdidesisyon? Noong unang panahon, wala ka po ang Biblia, kaya ang Diyos ay nakikipag-usap sa pamagitan ng direct communication. It may be a dream, or personal, or through His angels, but I want you to know that God is talking to us. God is absolutely talking to us. My friend, He is absolutely talking to you. Our God is a God who talks. What is one thing that I really like Abraham is that when God started calling Abraham, He answered. He said, and He said unto Abraham, Abraham, and He said, Behold, here I am. Just as when somebody called us sa telepono at sinabi natin, may tumatawag, ano sa sagot natin? Hello? How can I help you? Eh, biglang tumawag, tapos bigla natin sinagot. Parang ganun din ang nangyari. No? Si Sao Ang Diyos, tumawag kay Abraham. Abraham? Anong sabi ni Abraham? Here I am. In our time right now, God is also talking with us and to us. When the Bible, the Word of God is fulfilled, There has been the way for us to communicate with the Lord and know His plans. Noong nalikha, noong nagawa po ang Biblia, noong naisunat po ang Biblia, God is not talking directly to us in communication, but He is talking directly to us through the Bible. And my question would be, every time that God is calling you to have a communication with the Word of God, have you ever answered, Here I am, Lord. Ang dito ang Diyos, ang dito ang Panginoon, gusto ka niyang makausap. Sinabi mo ba, here I am Lord. So, ang mga Bibles po sa ating bahay, ang nangyayari, naalik ka bukan. Naalik ka bukan. Ang hindi mo. You've never, you've never dared to answer the Lord, here I am Lord, I will read your word. In our time right now, God is also talking with us. Christians in the 21st century are not responding to the calling of the Lord. The best character of Abraham, number one, is his ability to answer in quick response. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Abraham, ang sagot ni Abraham, Here I am. Ngayon mga kapatid, may panawagan ng Diyos. Gusto niya po tayong makausap. Ngunit kapatid, kailan mo binasa ang Biblia, ang salita ng Panginoon? Hirap na hirap ka na sa buhay mo. Hindi mo na alam ang gagawin mo. Hindi mo na alam ang susunod mong habang. Pero paano mo malalaman ang susunod mong gagawin? Have you ever have time to communicate with God? Prayer is not just enough. Hey. You have to read your word. The word 
Word of God. Amen. So that you would know the answers to God's to your prayers. Amen. May panawala ng Diyos. Gusto niya po tayong makausap ngunit kapatid. Kailan mo binasa ang salita ng Panginoon? Ang dami po nating dahilan. Kesyo malabo po ang mata natin. Pagbubili ka ng salamin. Kesyo wala tayong oras. Kesyo busy tayo sa trabaho. Umamin po tayo sa Panginoon. Kailan ang uling pahipagbiig mo sa Panginoon? Nandito ka sa church. But you're not reading the Word of God. You're not communicating with your God. When was the last time that you had communication with God through His Word? When was it? Hindi ko po kayo din na-judge. Ikaw na kalam niya sa Panginoon. I don't care if you are a housewife. I don't care if you are a staff. I don't care if you are a policeman. I don't care if you are a nurse. I don't care if you're a physical therapist or an accountant. I don't care what you're doing with your life. But what I care is your communication with the living God. Your communication with the living God. Para namang ginagawa mong maliit ang Diyos eh. Bakit? Kasi hindi ka nga nakikipagbig sa Kanye eh. Tapos na may problema ka, tsaka kalalapit sa Diyos. Pag meron ka mga pinagdadaanan sa buhay mo, tsaka kalalapit sa Panginoon. Lord, bakit mo ginawa sa amin ito? Paano mo malalaman? Hindi ka nga nagbukas ng Biblia. Here in this passage, God called Abraham. And Abraham responded, Behold, here I am. I was listening to a sermon before and the preacher said, the greatest pandemic that is happening in our lives as Christians is the pandemic of fear. The pandemic of fear. Ang mga Kristiyano takot. Takot magbahagi ng salita ng Panginoon. Takot gumasas ng pera at mabawas ng pera nila sa bako. Takot, ano, takot lumabas at mag-outreach. E maganda na ako, hindi na ako pwede mag-outreach. Malabo lang aking mata, hindi na ako pwede mag-Bible. This is the greatest pandemic that the Christians is experiencing right now. The pandemic of fear. The pandemic of fear that Christians are not doing the best for the Word of God. Takot na takot tayo, nasa loob tayo mga tahanan natin. Ni ayaw mo natin lumabas, ni ayaw mo na sumama sa outreach. The pandemic of fear. When the Lord is calling, we are afraid to respond. But Abraham was not afraid. Amen. Abraham said, Lord, behold, here I am. Natatakot tayo. Nakapagsinunod natin ng Panginoon. Mawawalan po tayo ng trabaho. Ako yung pinatamahan sa masay. Nagtatakot tayo. Nakapagsinunod natin ang Panginoon. Mga walang tayo ng pera. Minsan uh-huh. yes. ganito tayo. Panginoon, i-bless mo naman ako. Pag bless mo ako, susunod ako sa'yo. Bless ka ng Panginoon. Pero wala pa rin. Hindi ka ba rin sumusunod? Kung ibe-bless mo ako, Panginoon, kung ibibigay mo ito, ipapasa mo yung anak mo sa board exam, o di kaya naman, kung magkakaroon ako ng negosyo, susunod ako sa'yo, Panginoon. Pero bakit may kondisyon ang ating pagsunod sa Panginoon? Bakit kailangan laging may kondisyon? Bakit kailangan laging, laging ipakita ng Diyos na ito yung gusto kong mangyari sa buhay mo? Hindi dapat ganoon. Amen. Kasi ang sabi ni, ni Abraham, sabi pa niya, tumatawag ang Panginoon sa kanya, sabi pa niya, Panginoon, wait lang. Ang sabi ni Abraham, Abraham? Ang sabi ng, Pang- ang sabi ng Panginoon, Abraham? Ang sabi ng John, ang sabi ni Abraham, Lord, here I am. Here I am. At dito lang ako, Lord, pakikinig ako ng instructions. Amen. Kapatid, takot tayong maghirap. Bakit ka natatakot maghirap? Papalitan ng Panginoon yan. Yes. Yes. 
Kapalitan ng Panginoon niya. Kailanman hindi kami pinaghihirap ng Panginoon. Amen. Amen. Kapag tayong maghirap, kaya hindi natin maiwanan ang ating mga trabaho tuwing araw ng linggo. Mga tatay na wala dito sa church, bakit ka wala? Natatakot ka maghirap kayo ng pamilya mo? Takot tayong maghirap kaya wala tayo sa araw ng linggo. Kaya mo ba hindi maiwan ang trabaho mo tuwing my church gatherings? Bakit? Natatakot ka mawala ng sweldo. Bakit? Hindi mo ba kaya? Hindi ba kaya ibigay ng Diyos ang isang, hindi mo ba kaya ibigay sa Diyos ang isang araw para sa Kanya? Napakagal na natin, Kristiano, kapatid. Pero andun ka pa rin sa point ng buhay mo na pasulbot-sulbot. Hindi ba kaya natin ibigay sa Diyos ang araw na ito para sa Kanya? Hindi ba kaya ng Diyos na doblehin ang inikita mo mula lunes hanggang Friday? Hindi ba kaya magpala ng Diyos para maiwanan mo yung linggo at sama-sama tayo magpuri sa Panginoon? Amen. Hindi ba kaya ng Diyos na pagpalain ka? Amen. Hindi ba kaya ng Diyos doblihin ang kinikita mo wala lunis hanggang biyernes? Prove the Lord God in your life. Amen. Kapatid, mga nanay, mga tatay, puro na lang pagkita ng pera ang inaalala natin. Kailan tayo tumugon sa pagtawag ng Panginoon? Hindi pa may gandang makita ng ating mga anak ay si tatay nasa church kapag linggo. Amen. Ay si nanay nasa church kapag linggo. Amen. Si nanay nasa church kapag prayer meeting. Amen. Gagayahin ko nga. Amen. Mga nanay, mga tatay, hindi pa kay ganda ang pagmasdan ng ating mga anak na ginagamit ang kanilang buhay sa gawain ng Panginoon? Amen. Ano gusto mong mangyari sa buhay ng mga anak mo? Nandiyan sa labas at bakalang kala? At uuwi ng lasing? Mga nanay, mga tatay, hindi pa kay ganda ang pagmasdan ang ating mga anak na ginagamit ang kanilang buhay sa gawain Amen. ng Panginoon. Amen. Bakit natin sila pinipigilan? Amen. 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 Meron naman tayong sariling streaming. Yeah. May sariling tayong streaming, may sariling tayong event. Event ba ng church? Bakit natin sila pinipigilan? Bakit mo pinagbabawa lang sumama sa mga youth fellowship ang iyong mga anak? Anong gusto mo dyan? Mamuhay sa kasalanan? Yeah. Yeah. Hindi mo nga madala ang mga anak mo sa church. Let's talk about Abraham in this passage. What was happening in Abraham's life during this time? Abraham was a husband. He was a husband. Ta, asawa siya. Abraham was a leader. He was a leader in his household. Kaya mababasa mo, may mga servants siya. Abraham was a servant of God. Next, among all of it, Abraham was a father. He was a father. Yes. Let us read verse number 2. In Genesis chapter number 22, verse number 2, in Shadow John. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son. Grab it. Sabi na, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. You know the background of his story? Yes. For 100 years, hindi po nagkanak si Abraham at ang kanyang asawa na si? Sarah. Sa loob ng daan-daan, hindi sila magkanak. Hindi magbunti si Sarah. Bakit? Hindi natin alam. Baka pinsirahan ng Diyos ang kanyang bahay bata. Pero after 100 years, ang sabi ng Diyos, Abraham, magkakanak ka. Ang sabi ng Diyos, magkakanak ka. Just imagine, just imagine, for 100 years, just imagine how Abraham, he was waiting for his child. For 100 years, Abraham was waiting for his child. Nag-iintay siya, tumasal pa siya sa Panginoon. Panginoon, bigyan mo ko ng anak. Bigyan mo ko ng anak, Panginoon. Panginoon, bigyan mo ko ng anak. Bigyan mo ko ng anak. For 100 years, just imagine. He was waiting for that child, Isaac, for 100 years. Just imagine how happy he was when he felt and he 
he gave his warm embrace to his son Isaac. Siguro nung pinanganak si Isaac, alam niyo kung pinanganak si Isaac sa ilabas ni, ni Sarah? Ano kayo sigla at may noon si Abraham? Sabi niya siguro, wow, wow, at last, may alam na ako for 100 years. Wow, at last, pinubuhat ko na ang sarili kong anak for 100 years nag-intay si Abraham. Just imagine how vulnerable he was, how happy he was noong una niyang nakita ang kanyang anak. I believe there will be portion of crying here. Umiiyak siguro si Abraham. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this, for Isaac. At last, God gave them a child for the years of waiting. This may be a joyous occasion, isn't it? Isn't it? But in verse number 2, Alam niyo kung nangyari? Anong sabi ng Diyos? Sabi ng Diyos, Take now thy son and only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I tell thee of. Anong sabi ng Diyos? Dalin mo si Isaac sa land of Moriah at i-offer mo sa akin ang iyong anak. Can you put your feet on the shoes of Abraham? Sabi niya, Abraham! Sabi niya, here I am, Lord! Sabi niya, sabi niya, Diyos, kunin mo ang iyong anak, sabi niya, hindi lang ang iyong anak, ang kaisa ay sa mga anak, hindi lang ang iyong kaisa ang isang ina, ang iyong pinakamamahal na anak, at i-offer mo sa akin ang anak mo. Can you imagine how drastic this situation was? Let's go now to point number two. Nung inutusan siya ng Panginoon, nadalin sa land of Moriah, kanyang anak, this is the best character of Abraham. A character of obedience to the instructions. Ano yung first character natin? A character of quick response. Number two, a character of obedience. Ang tatay na ito, marunong sumunod. Marunong sumunod sa Panginoon. Ang sabi na, an instruction that would dig in our own way of thinking. However, I do not want to question God. Ayoko pong questionin ang Panginoon. Bakit niya kailangan ipang-offer? Si Isaac sa kanya? I do not want to question God. But let's focus on the instructions. Alam niyo, sabi ko kasi ng Isaiah 55, verse number 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your ways are my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so thy ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Ayaw mong question ng Panginoon. Bakit niya kailangan ipa-offer? Thank you, Mami. Ipa-offer si Aisha. But let's focus on the instruction. Alam niyo kung ano mga instruction, aralin natin one by one. Andiyan po kayo? Yeah! Ang sabi niya dyan, Take now thy son. That's first instruction. Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac. Hello, kapatid. Alam niyo po habang binabasa ko ito, naka-amaze ako sa Panginoon. Alam niyo kung bakit? Take now thy son, thy only son. Ano pang ang sumunod? Ano, thy only son, ano sumunod doon? Isaac. Isaac. Ba't kilala ng Panginoon si Isaac? Hmm. Yung sabihin, kilala ka ng Panginoon. Yeah. Yeah. Kilala niya ang iyong mga anak, ang iyong mga apo, yeah. ang iyong mga pamilya, kilala ng Panginoon. Kaya nang mga ako sa Panginoon, alam niyo kung sabi niya, ano na kilala ng Panginoon si Isaac? Eh kasi siya ang nagbigay. Yeah. Sabi niya, take now thy son, that's the first instruction. Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom lovest. God's knowledge is unimaginable. Get thee, instruction number two, sabi niya, get thee into the land of Moriah. Take thought of that. That's the second instruction, trivia. Moriah is not a mountain. It is a land. Ang sabi niya dyan, get thee to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains in the land of Moriah. Therefore, Moriah is not a mountain, but therefore a land. Kaya yung knowledge natin, kaya kailangan magbasa tayo ng Word of God. Bakit? There are still things that we have to learn. Buong buhay natin, alam natin, si Moriah ay mountain. 
But this time, the Bible is telling us, Moriah is a land, and one of the mountains which I tell thee of. That's the second instruction. The third instruction, ano sabi ni John? Sabi niya, Offer him there for a burnt offering. Tatlong instruction ng Panginoon. Take thy son, dalin mo siya sa Moraya, at i-offer mo siya sa amin. God was clear in His instructions. He wants him to let Isaac die and be burnt as sacrifice. Imagine the heart of the father. The heart of the father na hinantay niya ng 100 years. Tapos sasabihin ng Diyos, i-offer mo sa akin yung anak mo, ang pinakamamahal mong anak, ang pangalan niya ay sa Lord, dahil yung paglumuhan ka ba? Pero hindi ka rin yung sinabi ng Diyos. Hindi ka rin yung sinabi, sorry, hindi ka rin yung sinabi ni Isaac. Ang sabi ng pamilya, ang sabi ni, ay sabi ni Abraham, alam niya, verse number, um, verse number three, ano sabi siya? Nag-alilangan ba siya? No. After hearing instructions from the Lord, was there any unclear instruction? Everything was clear. Nagsalita pa siya sa Panginoon. Panginoon, ano po? Ano po, Panginoon? Sabi ng Panginoon, dalim mo ang iyong anak sa land of Moriah at i-offer mo sa akin. Sinabi pa ni Abraham, Lord, bakit? Sinabi pa niya, hindi. Ang sabi niya, was there any unclear instructions? Alam niya, did he ask God? Lord, paulit? Hindi ko naiintindihan, Panginoon, Lord, paulit? Walang sinabing ganun si Abraham. Alam niya, did he ask God? Sabi kaya na sa Panginoon, Lord, are you telling me to offer my only son to you? Are you telling me, God, I've waited for 100 years, I've waited for a son, and then you are going to tell me that you want me to give my son to you? Did he say that? No. No. He was obedient. Amen. Did Abraham ask why? Did he overreacted and shouted to God, Lord, bakit naman? Bakit naman, Panginoon? Hinihintay ko ata ng 100 years, tapos bakit ko siya mong i-offer siya sa'yo? Why are you doing this to me? Siya ba ay naglupasay sa lupa at si lupa ang Diyos sa, pag, sa testing na ito? No. Kaya kung may mga testing tayo, hindi tayo lang na tayo maglupasay, you know? Siya ba ay naglupasay? Siya ba ay gumawa ng paraan para itago si Isaac? Was there any hesitation on, on, on Abraham's heart? The answer would be no. He followed. He followed God. Even it's hurtful in his pride. Minsan, takot tayong sumulod sa Panginoon kasi yung pride natin nakasalalay. Pero pag sumulod tayo sa Panginoon, wala dapat pride. Si Abraham walang pride. Ano ginawa niya? He followed God. Verse number 3. Ano ginawa niya? And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood. O oh, grabe, hindi siya may question sa Panginoon. Pero ano ginawa niya? Hinanda niya ang mga kahoy and burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. And the second, Abraham did not question. Abraham did not murmur. What did he do? He immediately followed and obeyed the instruction of God. Let's read verse 3 to 6. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took to his young men with him and Isaac his son and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire and his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. Tayo po mga kapatid. Thus obedience is one of our best characters. Maroon na ka bang sumunod? 
Nagaanin langan pa rin ba tayong sumunod sa utos at katotohanan ng Biblia? Nandun ka pa rin ba sa point ng buhay mo na tuwing araw ng linggo, nagdadalawang isip ka pa din. Mag-church ba ako? Ay, hindi. Mag-church ba ako? Ay, hindi. Mag-church ba ako? Hindi. Mag-prayer meeting mo? Hindi pa rin. Oo, oo, papunta ako? Ay, hindi. Ano pa rin ba sa point ng buhay mo na nagdadalawang isip ka pa rin? Kapatid! Siyempre, ang nga hindi nagsalita ng kahit ano eh. Anak niya ang isa sa sacrifice sa Panginoon. Pero ano sabi niya? Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Amen. I will offer to you my only son. Amen. Ikaw pa rin ba ang isa sa mga nagmamurmur tuwing may mga instructions ang ating mga magulang? Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Isa ka pa rin ba sa nagsasabing wait lang, mommy, sabay hawak sa cellphone. Right. Isa ka pa rin ba sa napakaraming question sa loob ng church? Isa ka pa rin ba sa lahat ng programa sa church ikini question? The church is not just a ground of fellowship for edification. The church is also a ground for training for development, for correction. Bakit natin gusto matuto ang mga kabataan? Bakit? Kasi gusto natin sila maging confident. Maging confident sa pagtayo sa harapan upang sila'y maging handa sa anumang ministeryo. Bakit natin sila tinuturuan magsalita ng Ingles upang sila'y maging handa sa anumang ministeryo ang itatagubili ng Panginoon sa mga kabataan na ito sa susunod na henerasyon? Pati kaya, isa ka pa din sa mga <clears throat> walang pakialam sa loob ng church. Mga tatay. Si Abraham po ay isang tatay din. Huwag po natin pairalin ang ating pagiging tatay na akala mo namang alipin natin ang ating mga anak. Minsan pagka sinabi, ah, tatay ako. Kung si Abraham, Abraham nga marunong sumunod, ikaw pa kaya Abraham was a father of all nations. Marunong sumunod si Abraham. Sana po, ganun din ang ating mga maging mga ugali, mga tatay. Hindi po natin alipin ang ating mga anak. Kung mga tubig. Pahit ang mga tubig. Bakit? To become a good leader, you must be a good follower. Gusto mo maging pasunuri ng anak mo, tatay, nanay, Tatay, nanay, gusto mo maging masunuri ng anak mo? Kailangan mo magpakita ng magandang halimbawa. Amen. Amen. Ikaw ay maging ehemplo sa iyong mga anak. Gusto mo maging maayos ang buhay nila. Dali mo sila sa church. Hindi nga natin madala ang ating mga anak sa loob ng church. Eto po po, alam niyo po, andito po kayo? Yeah! Okay na lang po, ano, maganda itong pag-usapan natin ito. The point of view of Sarah. Imagine, imagine, nung inutos ng Panginoon, actually part 1 pa lang po itong pag-usapan natin, siguro in the near future, may part 2 pa. So, in the point of view of Sarah, ano point of view ni Sarah? Pinigilan ba ni Sarah si Abraham? E siya yung nagbuntis ng sum na buwan? At, di na nagdala si Isaac at siya yung nanganak na maghirapan siya sa panganak, pinigilan ba ni Sarah si Abraham na i-offer sa Panginoon? Of course. Nag-uusap ang mga mag-aasawa sa mga instructions ng Panginoon. Ang sabi sa akin ng Diyos, Sarah, i-offer daw natin yung anak natin sa kanya. Sinabi ba ni Sarah, bakit? Ba't kailangan i-offer? Ayaw ko nag-heal dyan eh. Hindi. Ang sabi ni Sarah, go on. Kasi the Bible is silent eh. Ibig sabihin, hindi nag-question si Sarah. Kasi inutos siya ng Diyos. Sabi niya, pinigilan pa ni Sarah si Abraham. Gumagawa ba siya ng aksyon? Gumawa ba si Sarah ng aksyon upang pigilan si Abraham na i-offer si Isaac sa Panginoon? Hindi. Bakit? Naniniwala si Sarah. Diyos ang nagbigay. Amen. Diyos din ang Amen. Amen. Dito ko nakita kung gano'ng kaimportante ang pag-aasawa. Dapat parehas kayo ng pananampalataw. Amen! 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 Paano kung hindi kristyano si Sarah? Naintindihan kaya ni Sarah ang utos ng Diyos? 
na kinakailangan natin i-offer ang anak natin sa Panginoon, Sarah. Bakit natin i-offer? Ayun na, ito na. Ito na yung mga buru 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 buru. hindi na po si Sarah because he is, she was a Christian. Amen. She knows the value of the instructions of God. Amen. Lalo kikin sa pagsunod sa Diyos. Paano nga kung ang believer si Sarah, hindi niya maiintindihan talaga ang instruction ng Panginoon. Kaya kinakailangan natin, ano, masigurado ang ating relationship. Ang gusto ko rito, hindi ba alam ni Sarah ang mangyayari? Of course, alam niya. Of course, alam niya. Napapatahin si Isaac. Alam ko yan. Bakit? Kasi noong pumunta ang hell sa bahay nila Abraham, actually, I do believe that the Bible is silent about this one, pero ang pumunta ang hell, ang sinasabi sa Biblia, but we believe ang, ang Panginoon, ang nagsabi kay Isaac, magkakaroon ka ng anak, ando si Sarah sa gilid at nakikinig. Oh, oh, talaga ako? 100 years old? Magbubuntis? Oh, talaga? ang mga babaeng magagaling sa ganito. Marites. Mga marites. <laughs> Alam nyo, kaya pag may nawawala sa bahay, mami, asa nyo ganito, kunin mo dyan sa toko doon sa ilalim. Mami, asa nyo ganito, nasa ilalim na usina. Magagaling ang mga babae sa ganito. Bakit? That's your gift. Gamitin natin sa tama. Amen. Kung magmamarites tayo, ibahagi natin sa salita ng Panginoon. Alam mo ba, kumari? Alam mo ba, sa Sunday kami, ang dami namin sa church, baka naman pwede din namin si Mara sa church. Amen. Right. Hindi ko alam, parang may union ng mga kababaihan na pag nagkita lang sila, nakakaintindihan na. Hmm, yung pamanda, pamanda mo. Pero, ina-analyze ko din yung posibleng nangyari dito. I believe, pumiyak din si Sarah. Ngunit hindi ito dahilan upang mawalan ng pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Nagaling pa siya kay Abraham. Bakit ka naman pumayag, Abraham? Ba't ka pumayag, Abraham? Nagibigay ang ating anak. The Bible is silent. But the point here, Sarah obeyed God's instructions well. Ipinakita rin ni Sarah ang kahalagahan ng pagsunod sa Diyos. Bilang may bahay. This time, para naman sa mga anak, nagbigay ang instruction ang Diyos kay Abraham. Ang sabi ni Abraham ay sa verse number, ano tayo? Verse number 7. Sabi niya, ay sa up. Sabi niya dyan, oh, mamaya na pala. Nagbigay ang instruction ng Diyos kay Abraham. Ang sabi ni Abraham, ay sa up, sumama ka sa akin. Okay? Ayan, ayan. And ay sa up, spake unto his father. Ano, ah, no, no, hindi pa yan. Nagbigay ang instruction ng Diyos. Sabi niya, ay sa up, sumama ka sa akin. Alam niyo po kung anong ginawa ni ay sa up? Sumunod din siya sa kanyang tatay. Sumama siya sa land of Moriah. Bagamat hindi na iintindihan. In verse 5, nabasahin niyo natin in verse 5. Alam sabi niyo doon? Uh, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass. No, no, in verse number 4. Tingnan natin yan. In verse number 4. No, it's not. Uh, ito, verse number 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took of his young men with and Isaac his son. Sumunod po si Isaac sa kanyang tatay. Bagaman hindi niya po naiintindihan ang mga nangyayari, pero sumunod siya sa kanyang ama. Sa panahon natin ngayon, napakahirap na pong makita na mga kabataan ay marunong sumunod sa kanilang mga magulang. Napakahirap po. Nagutos ang magulang, anong kadalasang narinig, wait lang. Sabay hawak sa cellphone habang naglalaro. Nagutos ang nanay, wait lang, shame on you. Grabe, pinagintay mo yung nanay mo na nagluwal sa'yo sa lupang ito. Nanay, wait lang. Shame on you. Hindi ba pwedeng, opo mami, opo daddy. Our third point, what are the best characters of Abraham? Number one, quick response. Number two, Obedience to God. Number three, a character of fatherhood. Ang magpakatatay, madaling maging isang ama, ngunit mahirap magpakatatay. Let's read in verse number seven. Sabi niya dyan, And Isaac spayed unto Abraham, his father, and Isaac spayed unto Abraham, his father, and said, 
my father, siguro boses bata ito, no? and he said, here I am my son, and he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Then, kung makapansin natin, kung makapansin natin, gaano kabuting ama si Abraham sa kanyang anak? Ako'y namangha, in verse number 7, ako'y namangha sa pagpapakita ni Abraham na maayos na komunikasyon sa kanyang anak. I-post mo nga dyan, Sister Angel, in verse number 7. Anong nakalagi dyan? Okay, na lang. And I shall speak unto Abraham, his father, my father, tatay, anong sabi ni Abraham? Here am I, my son. Here I am, here am I, my son. The right communication with your child, with your children. Ang mga tatay, dapat magkaroon po ng maayos na pagsagot po sa ating mga anak. Kung minsan ganito ang pagsagot ng aking tatay, tatay, tingnan mo yung score pa, pagbuko ko sa pen, busy ako pagbuko sa trabaho. <laughs> Kung minsan tayo pong mga tatay, tayo, di ba po ang tatay, no? Kung minsan kayo pong mga tatay, masyado po natin pinapairan ang ating mga pride. Magsasalita pa lamang ang ating mga anak, sasabihin na natin, magbuko ka sa amin, pagbuko ko sa trabaho, pinipairan na natin masyado na dapat tayo ay brusko, na dapat tayo ay malakas, Nawawala na po ang love. Nawawala na po ang affection sa ating mga anak. May mga problema din po ang ating mga anak. Ngunit hindi na natin sila napapakinggan. May family devotion pa ba ang pamilya ninyo? Kinakausap pa ba ng tatay ang mga anak? Kinakausap lang kapag ka, alala kong budget. <laughs> Bakit tumatawa kayo dyan? Kung ano na bang nangyayari? Yung komunikasyon. Yung komunikasyon ng tatay sa anak. Ang sabi ni, ni Isaac, my father. Ang sabi naman ni, ni, ni Abraham, here am I, my son. Yung ibig sabihin nun, take a look at this. Try to understand. Ibig sabihin nun, very, very, very eager. Napakinggan ni Abraham, si Isaac, sa lahat ng kanyang concerns. Ganito po ang pagiging tatay. Ang pagpapakatatay. Mahirap maging tatay, pero ma, ma, uh, madaling maging tatay, pero mahirap maging magpakatatay, sumasabog na lang pong bigla ang mga problema ng ating po mga anak. Mamaya po, malaki na ang tiyan. Kasi nga po, sa iba nakahanap ng comfort. Yun pala ang nagko-comfort, iba naman pala ang gusto. Kaya lumaki ang tiyan. Anong nangyari? Imbis na maayos ang problema, mas lumala pa. Nakakausap mo pa ba, nanay at tatay, ang inyong mga anak as in one-on-one -on -one talk Amen. Sobrang busy mo sa paglilinis ng buong bahay niyo. Pero mong sinabi niya, Nakano ano pong problema mo? Bakit ang tahimik mo? Nakukumusta mo pa ba sila? O masyado kang problemado, wala kami sa sign mamaya, wala kami ulam. O tugon mo ba tuwing sila'y may katanungan? Here I am, my son. Nakikinig ako. Nakikinig ako. Kapag may problema ang mga anak mo, saan sila na malapit? Sa iba ba ako sa iyo? Kasi hindi mo pinapakitaan ng ano, eagerness to listen to their problems. Here I am, my son. Anong problema mo, anak? Anong problema mo? Letter A. In point number three. Abraham is a good listener. Letter B. A good example of faith. Anong sagot ni Abraham? In verse number 7, in verse number 8, anong sabi dyan? Let's read verse number 8. Konti na lang po. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. So they went them both together. Faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Alam nyo, nagalit pa si Abraham? Nagtanong ba si Abraham? Bakit kailangan patayin ang anak ko? Bakit kailangan sacrifice? Hindi! Bakit? Meron siyang malaking pananampalataya that God will provide something. Amen. Hindi na hayaan mamatay ang anak ko. That is a complete faith. Ito po yung ating pong ibahagi sa ating pong mga anak. Alam nyo po, meron akong nabasa na book Ang title ng book is, Will Our Sons Defend Our Faith by Dr. Ebert? Kapag pa 
tayo ay namatay, magpapatuloy ba ang ating mga anak? Ngayon pa lang, pakitaan natin sila ng pananampalataya. A strong conviction that the Lord will provide. Amen? In verse number 8, and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb. Oh, take out of this one. Hindi pa niya alam na magpo-provide ng Panginoon. Pero anong sabi niya sa anak niya? God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Let's read verse number 9 to 10. Sabayin niyo po ako sa pagbasa. At matatapos na po tayo. Verse number 9. Sabi niyo dyan, And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on altar upon the wood, and the Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his sons. Ito na po. Binuwat na niya niya. Siguro, nag-iisip si Isaac, Tatay, sabi mo, magpaprovide ng Diyos na i-offer. Pero bakit ako yung tinatali mo? Bakit ako yung i-offer mo? Pero tahimik lang siya. Nagtitiwala siya sa kanyang tatay. I trust my father, my heavenly father, and my father, my biological father, I trust them both with my life. Magandang halimbawa po sa ating mga anak na tayo po'y dapat magpakita ng pananampalataya. Bagamat labag po sa kalooban ni Abraham, isipin mo din, in one part, sumunod pa rin siya sa Panginoon. Nagpapatunay na ang kanyang pananampalataya ay may plano ang Diyos. May plano ang Diyos. I can still remember in, uh, in uh, uh, before how blessed we are, or right now, how blessed we are to have a father in the faith how blessed we are to have our biological father. Kapatid, kung buhay pa ang tatay mo, kung buhay pa ang nanay mo, bless ka. Bless ka. Kasi pwede mo pang ibigay ang buong pagmamahal mo sa iyong tatay. What will happen if the family decided to follow God's instruction? Ito na po tayo. A God-fearing family. And this is the last one. Verse 11 to 18. Sign natin, sabay-sabay, begin. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the Lord, neither do thou anything unto him. For, uh, for now I know that thou fearest God, seest, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold him, a ram caught in the thicket by his swords. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Sabay sabay tayo, verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, and it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, and it shall be seen. 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, sabay sabay tayo sa verse 17 and 18, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. 18 begin. And in thy seed shall, thou, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my word. Sumunod si Abraham, sumunod si Sarah, sumunod si Isaac, sumunod ang buong pamilya. Alam mo ang nangyari? Provision ng Panginoon. Amen. Ano pong nangyari? Pabor ng Panginoon. Amen. Ano pong nangyari? Blessings ng Panginoon. Amen. When our family fears God, the blessings overflows. The blessing overflows. In our conclusion, ano karakter ni Abraham ang mayroon po tayo? Anong relasyon po natin? sa ating mga anak. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Mag-i po natin ang ating kongresyon.
Amen.